the impact of bigotry and political manipulations on the Nigerian democratic process. The turn of events following the aftermath of the Nigerian general election is a clear indication that our political leaders are not ready for the change the masses clamor for. The election results have left many Nigerians questioning the integrity of the democratic processes and the readiness of our leaders in bringing about change. Corruption, godfatherism, violence, tribal bigotry continue to plague our political system. The failure to provide a level playing field for all candidates and the deliberate disenfranchisement of certain groups due to type tribal bigotry and hate is a step too far. Nigerians are demanding fairness and the opportunity to choose leaders with integrity and dependability. However, the murkiness of corruption and violence has snatched away this wish, leaving a broken nation and awakening the monster of hate and tribalism that threatens our unity and progress. The rest of the world is watching and our political leaders must realize that the actions have consequences beyond our borders. Nigeria still has a long way to go in achieving free and fair elections. It is time for our leaders to put aside their personal interests and work towards the common good. We must not allow bigotry and political manipulations to overshadow our democratic ideas. The future of Nigerians depend on it. Think about this. Hate speech, hate propaganda, were identified as the catalyst of the genocidal violence in Rwanda in 1994, the xenophobic attacks in South Africa, and so on. We as Nigerians should be careful so as not to incite violence nor heat up the polity because it will be terrible to experience another civil war. Let us ponder on these words as we conclude. Conflict cannot survive without your participation. This is by Dr. Wayne Walter Dare, an American self-help author, speaker, and psychologist. Now, um, I love when people talk about politics and you would love to um, mention godfatherism. I'll first say something. In every profession, there's a godfather. If you're a mechanic, you're going to be an apprentice at one time. Sure. If you're a doctor, you're going to be a, a, a trainee doctor under a consultant. If you're, depending on how it is. So I think politics, the business is good. Now, the system of, of learning from someone else, has it been corrupted? Yes, because it's the people that are corrupted. It's not politicians that are corrupted. In a place where, and you, you this, if, if you study elections across Nigeria, there are villages where they will say, this is the guy we want to be our representative. He's the guy that is going to get us to the next. If he likes, let him run on that party XYL. They will guard their votes. They will escort those votes to the coalition unit and they will ensure that those votes are delivered. As long as we continue to mortgage our responsibilities in the democratic process, our democratic process will remain the same. It is not a situation of politicians. It's a situation of we, the people, not caring. Let's be honest. No offense to the media because I'm, I'm, on, I'm on TV <laughs> right now. But let's be honest. Kunle right now is getting a bid on advocates for free campus here and chill. And at the moment I say I'm running for president, Plus TV will charge me. No offense. So Plus TV will charge me five million for sitting down here. And it goes down to everything. It goes down to everything else. And, and you know, even at, from your friends that are running for office, the moment I declared I was running for office, my friends stopped paying for lunch, stopped paying for anything. I paid for everything else. Let serious? me tell you how bad it is. When my posters came out, my landlord increased my rent by 75%. <laughs> are you serious? Yes, I have money to well, trade with. Kind of wow. You have that kind of money. <laughs> so, who, <laughs> the mentality. Who is, who is, who is, who is guilty? The who is guilty, really? Uh, the people say it's the, it's the politicians. It's not the politicians that are guilty. But I would have thought that I'm going to go from the angle of the um, structure. You know, coming from the time of Basanjo and INEC and how they were able to carry out a, a good and fair election to a large extent that there wasn't animosity and everybody was able to, to an extent, trust the system. Because with this election, as I'm going to say I'm more of a bystander. So I wasn't an active participant. And to see the raw emotion and the pain that people felt when they felt that my candidate did not win. And I asked myself, your candidate did not win. But because you don't trust the system, 
You cannot say, oh, we lost. Let's take it in good faith and step back. No, I just want to interject. The worst election in Nigerian history is 2007. 2007? Oh, okay. The one <laughs> that brought Yara Dwayne to power. Okay. But I was hoping that we would continue to grow in the process and we, it's going to continue to get better. But looking at this last election, I think we just went like one million years backwards. There was so much confusion, so much violence. violence. It was all over social media. People were things. cutting away the boxes. So in some neighborhoods, in some communities, they actually had stakes and stones to protect they're, their they're votes. They're going to shoot me for saying this. They're going to shoot Are me for saying this. Are they supposed to have sticks and stones to protect their votes? They're going to shoot me for saying this, but I'm going to tell you the truth about As someone who has monitored and been part of the electoral process preceding 2015, this election is Nigeria's safest election. What happened in this election is that you now have social media which yeah, can expand what that. happened. Oh, exactly. Till today, 2007, INEC does not have the results for 2007. And you can check this out. And <laughs> oh, I know what I'm telling you. For a president to enter and say the election that brought me was Wala. Knowing that we're Nigerians, you should understand what happened. So, and I'll quickly take your mind to 2019. Um, look, I'll try to edit what I'm saying because we're on TV. Um, a woman was born in a house in Lokoja. Yeah. A resident election, election, electoral commissioner and his family were born in their house in Kano. Hmm. That did not happen this time. No, it's not. So what are you talking about? So as much as we don't want to... Social media has been A woman was killed in Kogi now, following bidding up to the election. No, in Kaduna. That no, was before this I'm, not saying, I'm not saying someone wasn't killed. I'm saying, okay, and I'm not saying the, 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 the volume of value, oh, violence. I'll give you an example. As much as they were shouting, Lagos has more than 11,000 polling units. The discrepancies with Lagos polling units were only 359. I can actually mention the places I found it's on social media. So. It's 359, the issues with polling units in Lagos. Out of the 11,000. Everything else went peacefully. That's the, that's the safest election Lagos has ever had in Lagos history. No offense. So, um, it, this well, does not well, make well, this does not make the election foolproof and beautiful. Okay. Mark it. I am saying in comparison. And it doesn't exonerate the electoral offenders. In, in compa yes, it doesn't exonerate them. But in comparison to okay. what we've done, the so only difference. So you think that we are gradually getting we are to growing. that phase? Having less violence yes. on the wider and scale. I, yes, and I think it's even good we have social media now. So social media is revealing what the monsters we truly are. Because if you go back, uh, Wiki's re-election in 2019, <laughs> it was a slaughterhouse in Rivers. People, they were, they were, cults were killing each other. That's the reality of our politics. And now, okay, people got flogged. Not good. <laughs> not good. <laughs> not good. Okay, okay. Not good. I don't agree to it. But like I said, you know, when we're making these comparisons, we must yeah. be conversant of the data perceived. Yeah, the scale of it, too, so that we don't so, uh, blow it up. You are saying that we are living from worse to bad. <laughs> I thought we were going, we were going back to worse to, to bad. Yeah. That's what he's trying but to say. We don't know we are alive at the good. Uh, well, so, uh, they say that they, they argue that we're still a young country. Okay, and okay. Still we'll young, be young forever. So. Let's grow up. Well, I uh, no, let me add this last line. So, if, if a country that has claimed 300 years of Democracy you can still have somebody oh, breaking yeah. into the Capitol House and pulling on the Speaker's table. Oh, yeah. I think we are doing fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that your excuse? <laughs> the end always seems to come too soon on the advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to the plus TV Africa.com, the support slash the advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Goodbye, everyone.